Hello and welcome to White Horse Music TV! My name is Richard Bodina and I am co-owner of this wonderful shop with my lovely wife Michelle Bodina who's wearing a scarf behind the camera. Today I am introducing you to the Struner Maestro Violin. Heinrich Gill W2 violin. Now, because it is my in my hand first, I will um, tell you about the Heinrich Gill W2 violin. Now, Heinrich Gill have been making violins since about 1952, um, and they have always made amazing violins. They have one of the biggest stores of aged tone wood in the world. Now, they have a new range of violins. They start from the W2, and then go up to the W3, and then go to the X5, which uses their new scientific modeling system, and then up to the X7, which is at the top of the range also using their new scientific modeling system. This is a completely different range to what they had before. There is, you know, previous models called 54 model, 58, 62, 66 and that sort of thing. Um, these new models have proven to be very, very consistent in that if I was to get a few of this particular model they would all sound fairly similar to each other. Uh, now they're all copies of um, antique violins. This uses very high quality maple on the front, European maple and European, sorry, high quality spruce on the front and high quality maple on the back. I wonder what that would sound like if you put maple on the front and spruce on the back. Probably not good. Um, so uh, the W2 model looks, as far as from a making point of view, very, very different to the W3, X5 and X7 in that the, f the top, the wood, seems a little bit, tiny bit thinner, but um, is a slightly more sort of um, curved shape on the front, a little bit more like an old Stainer violin. Stainer was a fam famous violin maker who made quite sort of bulbous violins. I had a copy of a Stainer violin, an, an old German copy of a Stainer violin that I used to use years ago. And this, you know, looks similar as far as its shape. Not exactly a Stainer model because they are quite bulbous, but it has a little bit of that about it. And so quite different, the making of this, to the next model up, the X5. Um, and it sounds quite different. Often when you have a slightly thinner top, the sound is a bit deeper. Because if you can imagine if you have a very thin piece of wood, it's easier to make it vibrate more widely. Where if it's a thick piece of wood, it doesn't vibrate as widely, and you need those wide vibrations to make a deep sound. And this has a deep sound. Interesting. And when I say it's got a thin, thinner top, it's not really thin in a bad way. This is Struna Maestro. Now Struna Maestro is partially my invention. Um, I have um, conglomerated, I have uh, cooperated with a maker, an amazing maker in China who um, instructs six people under his instruction who make these wonderful Struna violins. I go over there and I advise on thicknessing and varnishing and that sort of thing and um, each time we make a new group of them, I check the quality to make sure I am happy. And this way I end up with violins that I love. To my ear, they sound like what I want, which is, is a really good thing, I think. <laughs> um, so I'll play this Struna Maestro violin. <laughs> So it's 
also a copy of an antique violin. It looks slightly more antiqued. It's a little bit more fought, sort of faded to the flanks. This is our, um, our varnishing system where we use a spirit varnish underneath and this um, oil varnish over the top which has been sort of faded to the flanks. And it not only looks good but it makes a sound, it allows the wood to vibrate the way it wants to and make a nice deep strong sound. Now um, sound wise they are quite different in that I would say the Struner is a stronger, more vibrant, louder sort of a sound where the Heinrich Gill is a more reserved, very deep, but very pleasant for a, like the sort of violin that you would just love to play in your bedroom and play all day and all night. Forget about eating and eventually die. Don't do it that way. Just um, play it lots and that'll be great. So I'll play this again and see if you can hear what I'm talking about. <laughs> Back to the Heinrich Gill. Now, a significant volume drop, but a lot of beauty in this. And this is not a quiet sounding violin, it's more like the Struner is a very, very big loud sounding violin. So they are quite different, but that is not sort of a, shouldn't be a turn off from this violin, the fact that it has slightly lesser volume, because it's, it's very beautiful, and it depends what you're going to do with the violin. Um, if you're going to go out and play in um, a big concert hall to thousands of people, good luck to you. But if you're going to do that, then maybe this isn't the violin for, for you. The next model up of the Heinrich Gill and the model above that and the model above that, yeah, they are more sort of soloisty sounding violins. This, to me, is more sort of like warmth and depth and beauty. Um, I'll play it one more time just to sort of get that under my belt. <laughs> because that's sort of what it wanted to play. This is the Struna Maestro, by the way. Well, this is more like saying, this is me, I am a violin. I'm very big, I'm very loud, very direct, very strong. It still has warmth, but it's very, very, you know, sort of more like go out in front of a few million, I mean thousand people, and just play very, very loudly and strongly. So they are two completely different violins for two different sort of um, situations, for two different groups of people as well. And both of them sound fantastic. Um, I think you should buy both. Um, they both get the thumbs up at Whitehorse Music. Please subscribe to our video.